Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Well, I was shocked to see this much bubble algae and this vermetted snail on the rock that has the freak hair pavona on it. I don't know why I didn't see it before because I look at this coral a lot, but it was hiding around the back and I have a feeling it grew really fast. So I took my own advice and yanked this out of the tank the minute I saw it so that I could deal with this stuff. I decided to take a multi-stage approach. And the first stage of that would be to see whether I could get the original frag that held the pavona off of this rock. Because I did stick it onto this rock to give it somewhere to grow while I decided what ultimately to do with it. The putty I use is pretty darn good stuff, so I wasn't very optimistic, but I thought it would be worth a try, because if I could get this frag off of this rock, it would really reduce the chances that the bubble algae would be able to spread. Let me show you a quick tip before we get started. I use these microwavable gel packs underneath the container in which I'm holding my coral to maintain water temperature. This reduces stress on the coral because it's one less change for it to cope with while it's out of its normal environment. And it also gives me more time to get the job done without affecting the coral negatively. Here's a little tour of what I have set up to work on this coral. I have all the tools I could possibly need, I hope. <laughs> I hope I haven't forgotten anything. A couple of containers, and I also have some new salt water. Last time I was unprepared when I was working on Buster to remove the snail, but not this time. I'm ready to go. I'll start off with these stainless steel scissors and use them to try and pry the frag off of the rock. But after hacking away at this thing for maybe oh, five or ten minutes, I realized I had done much too good a job <laughs> of getting this thing stuck to the rock. And all I was doing here was popping lots of bubbles. So with that being a fail, I decided I had no choice but to carry on with further stages in my program. So I got a couple of important magnifying tools and my curved tweezers and I commenced picking the bubbles off. It's inevitable that some will break, but the idea is to avoid breaking them if at all possible. You also have to dig to try and get the roots from underneath because if you don't get the roots, the bubble algae will grow back. I have another way further on in this process of dealing with the roots and first, of course, I need to get all of these bubbles off. So I'm going to do that. Eventually. And here we are after I removed as many bubbles as I could see and I dug and got as many roots pulled out as possible. They actually pull out like little strings. Here's the container with lots of the bits that came off and while I was working I dipped the coral frequently in the water to keep it as wet as I could. Now I'm going to rinse this coral several times with the new salt water. This is to remove as much bubble slime as possible along with any little bits and pieces. I did use a brush all over this rock to try and loosen whatever I could and I'm going to rinse that off as well before I go on to the next stage. The rinsing is complete and now it's time for the next stage. I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide to try and kill any roots of the bubble algae that I was unable to remove manually. I've got this pipette and I'll use somewhere around 2 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide. It's the 3% household solution and I'm very carefully placing it only on the rock. I'm dripping it all around the coral but not putting any of it directly on the coral because it will of course burn it if it's too strong. Then I'm going to take the more new salt water and fill up the container until the water level is just above the coral. That will allow the water to interact with the hydrogen peroxide that's on the rock and that will cause the oxidation process to begin. And that's what I'm hoping will kill the algae. The coral will be submerged in the water that is a very dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide, but because it wasn't applied directly to the coral, there should be no oxidation happening on the surface of the coral. And you can see bubbles already forming. So it's on the heat pack, and I'm going to swish the water around a little bit just to get things moving. 
and I'm going to take 20 minutes or so and watch a couple of videos from a channel that I've just found called Gallery Aquatica TV. Shout out to them. They are an excellent channel and I'm really enjoying binge watching their videos just now. 20 minutes later. I'm back. After refreshing the heat pack once or twice, I've taken the coral out of the hydrogen peroxide solution and I'm adding the new salt water just to hold the coral while I get things ready for the next stage. And the next stage involves putty. For this, I'm using the DD Aquascaping Putty. This is the gray version. I'll also be using some glue. Working in small areas at a time in crevices and places on the rock where I knew there had been bubble algae and where I had wanted to be sure I got all of the roots, I'm going to fill those areas with glue, one small spot at a time. Then I'm going to take some of the putty and cover that glue, ensuring that anything that's left in there is entombed under glue and putty. Eventually, I covered all of the areas on the rock that I knew had been plagued with the bubble algae because it really was only on the back half of the rock. Now it's all done, ready to go back in the tank. And here it is a short time later. You can see that it is sliming and that's probably in response to the peroxide dip. It's also partly to do with the fact it was out of the water for the better part of an hour while I was working on it. Huge disclaimer here. You can obviously only do this effectively if you're working on a rock that you can pull out of the tank. But I would expect that if you acted immediately the minute you saw any bubble algae in a small area, got some putty, went and covered it up carefully, I bet you could stay ahead of it if you stayed right on top of it and acted quickly. But I don't think this would be a solution for a pre-existing large-scale problem. I'll be keeping a close eye on this over the next few weeks, and I'm really hoping that going through all this process stops any of that bubble algae from coming back. Now that's not to say that some might not float in from somewhere else in the tank, because I'm sure that's how it got there in the first place. Thank you for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. was him.